Hello everyone welcome my YouTube channel. Daily claim of bomb attack on Prime Minister Putin's wife's car in Russia. The Russian secret service took action on the claim that a bomb was placed in the car of Prime Minister Putin's wife. There is no clear news at the moment but Putin was very angry and the Ukrainian was struck by the information of a new attack and Ukrainian Air Force struck at clusters of Russian troops 16 times Ukrainian aircraft carried out 16 strikes on clusters of Russian military personnel, weapons and military equipment in the south of Ukraine in response to previous Russian attacks. Quote, the occupying forces continue to deploy multiple launch rocket systems, tubed artillery and mortars to fire on the positions of our units. The Russists deployed artillery of various calibers and multiple rocket launchers to fire on Romadas in the Bashtanka district of Mykolaiv Oblast, in the Beroslav district of Kherson Oblast, and in the Nikopol district of Dnepropetrovsk Oblast. A Romada is an administrative unit designating a city, town, or village in its adjacent territories, ed. No casualties or damage have been reported. Details. The Russian Air Force attacked the territory of Ukraine six times over the past 24 hours. In response, Ukrainian attack and army aircraft carried out 16 strikes on areas where Russian manpower, military equipment and weapons were concentrated. Ukraine's rocket forces and artillery carried out around 130 firing missions over the course of the day. A total of 44 Russian soldiers have been killed. A Russian tank, two mortars and three armored vehicles were destroyed in addition to the aircraft and helicopter destroyed earlier the same day. Anti-aircraft gunners of the armed forces of Ukraine destroyed two ammunition storage points in a hangar with Russian military equipment in the Beroslav district. In addition, a successful strike on a pontoon crossing with Russian military equipment has been preliminary confirmed. Journalists fight on their own front line. Support Ukrainska Pravda or become our patron. Russia loses 480 military personnel, two helicopters and one plane in past 24 hours the Russian occupying forces have lost around 480 military personnel, nine tanks, 14 armored combat vehicles, one plane, two helicopters and three UAVs over the past 24 hours. Details. Total combat losses of the Russian forces between the 24th of February and the 28th of October 2022 were estimated to be as follows. Figures in parentheses represent the latest losses. Ed. 69,700 plus 480 military personnel. 2,640 plus 9 tanks. 5,378 plus 14 armored combat vehicles. 1,698 plus 8 artillery systems. 379 plus 0 multiple launch rocket systems, 192, plus 0, air defense systems, 272, plus 1, fixed-wing aircraft, 251, plus 2, helicopters, 1,401, plus 3, operational tactical UAVs, 351, plus 0, cruise missiles, 16, plus 0, ships, boats, 4,088, plus 1, 0, vehicles and tankers, 151, plus 1, special vehicles and other equipment. The data is being confirmed. Ukraine strengthens military forces on border with Belarus The Ukrainian army has reinforced its military strength in the north of Ukraine, along the border with Belarus. Ukrainian deputy head of the general staff's main operations directorate Alexei Horomov reported this at a press conference on Thursday morning. How strong Ukrainian the new units in the north are now and whether those reinforcements will come at the expense of military deployments in the south Horomov did not tell. Right now we do not see a buildup of an attacking force, but that threat is there and will remain there, Horomov said. We are responding to it and have reinforced our forces in the north. The Ukrainians have been preparing for another possible attack from Belarus for several weeks. At the beginning of the invasion, Russia tried to capture the capital Kyiv from that direction, and although the Ukrainians chased them away, military activity in the neighboring country has recently been increasing again. Result of our struggle definitely becomes liberation of our Ukraine. Zelensky on day of liberation of Ukraine from Nazi invaders The day of the liberation of Ukraine from the Nazis on the 247th day of our struggle becomes a symbol. The result of our struggle definitely becomes the liberation of our Ukraine. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky said in a video message on Thursday night. October 28 is already on the calendar. Every year on this day, 
We celebrate the liberation of Ukraine from the Nazi occupiers. We pay tribute to the Ukrainians who fought and defeated Nazism during World War II. Today we do it, holding not flowers in our hands, but weapons. Today, preserving the memory of the exploits of our ancestors means protecting their achievements. We remember the expulsion of the Nazis, approaching the expulsion of the Russists, Zelensky said. Sooner or later, he said, memories of a terrible war become a terrible reality. The neighbor becomes the aggressor. The aggressor becomes a terrorist. And Nazism becomes an example to follow. Evil always begins in the same way. The invaders call themselves liberators. The invasion of one's army is called self-defense. As 80 years ago, the Ukrainian people stand up for the defense of their native land. And the enemy's blitzkrieg plan becomes a failure, he stated. According to Zelensky, today, Russia's only tactic has become terror. Defeat is the only possible outcome of such tactics. Terror became a proof of their weakness and a test of our resilience. We will not be broken by shelling. The enemy's rockets in our sky are less scarier than hearing the enemy's anthem on our land. We are not afraid of the dark. The darkest times for us are not without light, but without freedom. Our warriors are strong, volunteers are tireless, partners are reliable, and people are indomitable. The second army of the world will become smaller and smaller. The losses of the enemy will become bigger and bigger, he also stated. We know, the president noted, that all invaders flee our land in the same way. Gauleiters and self-appointed governors end up the same. Reichskommissariats and quasi-republics die equally. And all our cities will definitely have our flags. Both Junkers and Kamikaze drones fall equally, Zelensky said. According to him, more than 30 drones were launched in two days. The defenders of our sky prevented the enemy's vultures from breaking into the rear of the country and down 23 Shaheds. In addition, the KH-59 guided air missile, two Ka-52 attack helicopters and another Su-25 attack aircraft were turned into scrap metal. In total, during this period, Russia carried out 4,500 missile strikes and more than 8,000 air raids. But we are fighting, we will shoot down more, he said. South Korea denies supplying lethal weapons to Ukraine President Yoon suk yeol responds to his Russian counterpart's statement by saying his country only provided humanitarian aid to Kyiv Ankara South Korea on Friday denied providing lethal weapons to Ukraine, saying it had never done so against Moscow. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol responded to Russian President Vladimir Putin's statement by saying his country only provided humanitarian and peaceful assistance to Kyiv. We've provided humanitarian and peaceful assistance to Ukraine in solidarity with the international community but never lethal weapons or any such things, Yoon was quoted as telling reporters in Seoul by Yonhap News Agency. But in any case, it's a matter of our sovereignty, and I'd like you to know that we are trying to maintain peaceful and good relations with all countries around the world, including Russia, he added. Earlier, Putin warned that Russia is aware of Seoul's decision to provide lethal weapons and ammunition to Ukraine and that such actions will destroy their relationship, according to the agency. In April of this year, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky requested military equipment from South Korea. However, Seoul refused to provide military support and said it will continue to provide humanitarian support to Kyiv. Good news in history, October 28, 60 years ago today. The whole world breathed a sigh of relief as the Cuban Missile Crisis ended with Soviet Union leader Nikita Khrushchev agreeing to dismantle his missiles in Cuba in exchange for Kennedy's promise to remove NATO missiles from Turkey and Italy. With the current risk of nuclear war in Ukraine, it's important to remember that Russia and the US have crossed these seas before. Watch an animated recap of the six days that saved the world, 1962, for starters, XCOM had presented President Kennedy with three plans to deal with the missiles on Cuba, one of which involved erasing it from the map with nuclear weapons. The second was a full-scale combined arms invasion, and the third, which Kennedy selected, was described as a limited action for a limited purpose, namely the prevention of further installation of missiles on the island through a blockade. Subsequent histories, including audio records made of the XCOM meetings secretly by Robert Kennedy, have revealed that the pressure on Kennedy to launch a nuclear first strike was immense. Eventually, diplomatic efforts behind the scenes between a Kremlin official and Robert Kennedy led to the, the USSR decision to pull out and ease tensions. Good day to everyone.